the painting uh, was virtually in two pieces. Um, one of the joins literally just fell apart when I pushed out these battens and removed these metal plates. Hi, my name is Britta New. I'm one of the conservators here at the National Gallery. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about this painting, The Judgment of Zeleucius. Zeleucius was a Greek um, lawmaker and he lived around 600 BC in the south of Italy. One of the uh, decrees that he made was to pass a law that stated that anyone caught committing adultery would be blinded, which is quite harsh. Um, but perhaps more harsh for Zeleucius himself when his son was caught having an, having, having an affair. So Zeleucius had to be seen to be upholding the law, but at the same time there was a certain amount of um, parental compassion. And so he decided that he would allow his son to only lose sight in one eye and he himself would give up one of his eyes um, in, in, in place of his son. And so here we can see that Zeleucius has just had his eye removed and here's the, the bloody hanky at their feet and um, his son is in the process of having his eye gouged out by what looks like an enormous corkscrew, which is quite a gory um, scene. It was quite common, this type of um, edifying scene of justice, I think, in the 16th century. This entered the William Morris Museum um, attributed to Parmigianino in the 19th century. And recently they were looking at the attribution of the painting, thinking that Parmigianino didn't seem quite quite right. Since that, that point, it's been actually reattributed to um, a follower of Niccolo Dell'Abate, who is um, an artist that was working um, in the school of Fontainebleau in France. He's an Italian artist who, who went over to, to Fontainebleau working with other um, major artists such as Antoine Caron. And this reattribution has actually meant that this picture has been identified and requested for a, uh, a major exhibition in Equan, just outside of Paris. Unfortunately, the state of the painting meant that it really wasn't displayable. Um, it was structurally unsound, it was virtually in two pieces, and it had a very, very heavy dark varnish that made it very, very difficult to, to actually decipher what was going on in the painting. And that's where we managed to step in. The William Morris Museum is uh, one of the UK's sort of smaller regional museums. They don't have a lot of funding and in, particularly in the current economic climate it's very difficult for regional museums to be able to afford major conservation treatments. Thanks to the National Programme Scheme which is really generously funded by the Aldama Foundation we're able to use our expertise and our facilities to actually take on some of these projects and provide conservation treatments for these museums. So this is actually a perfect example of the National Programme Scheme that we're, we're now able to offer to some of these museums. So I'm just going to turn the picture around so I can show you a little bit um, about what we did on the back of the painting. <laughs> So this is the reverse of the painting. It's um, an oak panel that's made up of six boards. It's actually really nice boards of oak, probably locally grown French oak, but it's had a lot of um, interventions on the reverse. When we received it, it had a series of strips of canvas on the back, and it also had a series of these metal plates actually screwing each of the joins of the boards together. The painting uh, was virtually in two pieces. Um, one of the joins literally just fell apart when I pushed out these battens and removed these metal plates. There were other issues with the joins and with um, splits in the back of the panel that were opening and I found actually I needed to split the painting into four parts in order to be able to make sure that it was going to be um, structurally sound again. I took it apart, I spent some time uh, working on and repairing splits in the panel and um, partial disjoins 
and then I cleaned out all of the desiccated glue from the old joins and realigned the surface. It's very, very important that we actually make sure that the surfaces are level on the front and then glued the painting back together again. And now the painting is completely structurally sound. The battens are functioning so they will still allow the boards of the panel it's themselves to actually expand and contract in response to changes in relative humidity. And that's how the panels are designed to to function when they're originally made. I'm now on the retouching stage of the treatment, trying to pull together the image um, so it works coherently. It's something that has been through several campaigns of cleaning and restoration and there's actually quite a lot of damage on the surface. There's quite a lot of repaint still on the surface because there are areas of particularly the background that have been very harshly treated and overcleaned. Um, so the cleaning had to be a little selective because of the amount of damage to the panel. And there are also areas where there are large losses of the original, I think because of um, a badly prepared priming layer that actually flaked off from the panel itself. Um, and we can see sort of like fairly obviously where some of these damages are. The figure groups on the whole are in really quite good um, condition. There are obvious damage to some places unfortunately the main subject matter is is quite damaged but on the whole you know there are some really lovely passages really beautifully decorative sort of like flowing figures and draperies um, that still work really well so as i say i'm just now pulling together um, the damages so that we have a coherent image so the painting is due for exhibition in air Coin, so i have about a month left to complete the restoration um, and get the painting ready to go off to France. If you want to learn more about art history, click here or here, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and goodbye.